Welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time we're going to take a look at this, a Ventu Max single board computer which has been supplied for review by my friends at Cardas. Now this is a very interesting single board computer. It's got a great range of case options. It comes with Android pre-installed on its internal EMMC flash storage and it's got the ability to dual boot. So let's go and take a closer look. Right, here we have the Cardass Vim 2 Max and if we open up the box you will see it's been supplied in a, a rather stylish case. And uh, given that this board has an Android pre-installed on an EMMC flash, this is therefore a single board computer you can use right out of the box. And indeed, uh, in the box, we also have down here a, a power cable to help us do just that. But uh, to get this all out of the way, we'll have a bit of a closer look. And uh, I should say there are various versions of the Akardask Vim 2. There is the Vim 2 Max that we've got here, and also the, the Vim 2 Basic and the Vim 2 Pro but they're all based on the same system on the chip, which is an octa-core system on the chip. This has got an Amlogic S912 inside it, and this has got eight ARM Cortex-A53 cores running it up to 1.5 gigahertz, as well as an ARM Mali T830 GPU. So this is quite a powerful board. And if we look at this table, you can see how the different models of the VIM2 differ, with the Max having three gigabytes of DDR4 RAM and 64 gigabytes of onboard EMMC flash storage and the Pro having three gigabytes of RAM and 32 gigabytes of EMMC, and the Basic having two gigabytes of RAM and 16 gigabytes of internal storage. And as I'm about to cover, all of the other hardware specifications are the same for all different versions of the board, and the prices range from about $99 up to about $150, depending on the model, whether a case is included, etc. And of course, they depend on the individual retailer. And I really would suggest shopping around because Yesterday, I actually found a Vim2 Basic on Gearbest for $49.99. So you can get a range of prices on the, the Vim2. Now, this particular Vim2 Max has been supplied in what's called the DIY case, and it's also got a heat sink installed and a fan installed. So this is an absolute top of the range Vim2. And if we turn it over, you'll see it's got a nicer metal plate on the base of this. And if I show you the, the edge there with all the connectors, all the connectors here on one edge, which is a rather nice, you can see what we've got is a two full size, what type A USB 2 ports there and there. We've got a gigabit ethernet. Uh, we've got a, here a USB C port, which is used for power, and also USB 2 OTG. We've got a micro SD card slot, and we've got a full size HDMI connector, HDMI 2.0A, offering up to 4K output. Now, we then move around the board. Here, you'll see on this edge, you can just see them on, on screen there work through these little sort of cut out things in the case. We've got three little buttons here, which uh, can just flick down like that. That's a reset button, a power button, and a function button. And then the other sides of the board are, are clear of any connectors or things like that. So this is a board we could start using the right way up again, straight away if we wanted to. But of course, you want to see inside, I want to see inside, so uh, let's now have a look inside. And uh, to do that, we did a special screwdriver because uh, we've got uh, triangle-headed screws on this board. But fortunately, I've been supplied with a triangle-headed screwdriver, which, of course, you get with this case if you actually purchased it as an accessory. So let's get inside. And uh, there we are. We can now get inside the case. And you can see the, uh, the single board computer in here. Looks very neat. Looks very nice indeed, doesn't it? You can see it's got the heat sink here and the... Uh, temperature control fan, which are both uh, optional accessories for the Vim 2. But I think to get it out of the case, we have to take out some more screws, which in this particular case, I think also go through the heat sink. So we'll, we'll see how that goes. And uh, there we are, the screws are released. Although I think we're gonna have an issue with these um, connectors for the, the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth because they're onto the board. But let's see what we can do. We just do tip it like that. And there we are, all here, the, the Vim 2 almost came out there, come on. Never done this before, I haven't ever started with a single board computer. We had to get out of a case to have a look at it. There we are, that's it coming out now. And uh, yes, I am gonna to have to just release those uh, connectors. Let me just do that. And uh, there we are, that wasn't quite as easy as I thought it was going to be. We've also taken off the uh, 
the heat sink there, but that's probably a good thing. We can, oh yes, there we are. There is the full view of the Vim 2 board. And uh, we can now very clearly see here the uh, system on the chip. The uh, S912 is sitting there. And we've also got here the module provides uh, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. You've got onboard Wi-Fi and Bluetooth on this board. I've just removed the uh, connectors from a little antenna down there. And uh, if we look at the front of the board, we can see those connectors we saw peeking out of the case earlier. And in particular, we can see that the Ethernet connector is designed so it goes through the board so it's as thin as possible. I think we last saw one of those on the Latte Panda Alpha. Anyway, if we move to the first short edge, we can see those three physical switches for reset, power, and uh, function. And then if we move to the second long edge, you can see we've got an IR infrared receiver for using a IR remote control with this board. And we've also got a 40 pin GPIO connector. So you can very much use the, the Vim2 for maker projects. Finally, if we move to the last edge, we can see the antenna connectors associated with a Wi-Fi and Bluetooth module, and also a connector for a real time clock battery and the connector for the fan. Talking of the fan, if I bring the heatsink module back on screen here, this is how it fits on top of the board, the heatsink module with the fan on top. And of course, on the bottom of here, there is a, a thermal pad, which allows it to make a reasonable or good thermal connection, depending on your point of view, with uh, the, the chips it's going to cool. You want to see the bottom of the board. I guess we should do that as well for completeness. Not a lot to see under here. Main thing is we've got the SD card slot, which will take up to 128 gigabyte SD card. So there we are, that is the, uh, the Cardass Vim 2. And I think it's now high time for me to put the thing back together. And so by the magic of filmmaking, here is everything reassembled, except now the board is housed in a clear version of the DIY case. I just thought I'd show you that. And indeed, by more filmmaking hocus pocus, here we have the board in the purple version of the case. I rather like the purple version. Yes, we've lost the connectors. There they are, over that side. Um, I like the fact it's got the purple around the edge on this one. So yes, Cardas sent me various versions of the case to have a look. And as you might have noticed here, we've got access to the GPIO connectors. And you can do that on all of these cases because this particular part just clips on top. So we could clip that back in, which could mean here we wouldn't have access to uh, and get it in there to, uh, to GPIO. So a very flexible, very well thought out system. This all said, I think I prefer the red case, so we'll go back to that. And uh, here we are, the board is now ready once again as it was a few minutes ago to uh, be tested out. Now, of course, to do this, we will need a few accessories and Cardas have sent me a few things to use with the board. And of course, we already have the, uh, the power lead that is in the box. I quite like this power lead, it's a corded power lead. It gives you the real fate it might actually take the power required. And to use with that lead, they've actually sent me a power supply, which obviously this will plug into the top of here. Nice uh, USB-C or at least USB-A to USB-C power supply, two amps, five volts. And uh, they've also sent me one of uh, these. This is a IR remote to control this if you've got it connected, for example, to your television. So there we are, there's the Cardass BIM 2. I think it's now high time we got the thing up and running. So, I've now got everything all connected up and we're booting into the version of Android that comes pre-installed on the board's internal EMMC flash. And uh, we can see where the board comes from on the screen there, that's very clear. And uh, hopefully, oh yes, we're starting to go into Android as an Android animation. And I should say this is not my first boot, I have booted already, but all I've done here is to put in my account details and network details so things will work. When we arrive at Android, as we are, there we are right now. Now to show you what is uh, installed here, and this is a very nice, very slick, very responsive Android uh, installation on this hardware. We've got a little uh, movie player there, I think it is. Just find a movie. I put a movie on here just to show you. There's a movie. Shall we resume from there? Why not? Cut and, uh, to the shot from the robot. oh look, it's me, uh, me showing you a robot a uh, recorded out in the there. park a while ago in my Devastator robot video. Robot. That's exciting, isn't it? All driving around. Let's uh, come out of that. And uh, we've got a little uh, music player up here. I haven't put any music there, so that obviously nothing to show you there. There's a uh, image uh, viewer there, a photo viewer, picks up a video as well. It seems to be, but we can look at uh, pictures. And uh, you can see they've set it up for all the basic things, haven't they? And there's a file browser here as well, which obviously is for browsing and sorting out your files. But uh, the main thing you want to see, of course, is here, the apps button there. 
and there's not too much pre-installed, but what there is pre-installed is really useful, it's really good. We've got a settings over there, so we can go and set things up. I found it very easy, for example, to change my HDMI frame rate, and this works very well. And then we've got Chrome here as well, so we can run the Chrome browser, which uh, I'm sure you can guess will show us the Exploding Computers website, and we can look at, uh, I don't know, ZX81 and classic computing videos, which will come up, and it even works with YouTube embeds absolutely fine. And if we go back a uh, level, oh, I pressed the wrong button, gone too far, never mind. Uh, we'll go back into there, and you'll see the critical thing here is we've also got the Play Store. Yes, this is an Android install with a Play Store all there and working, so we can go in if we wanted to and install lots of different apps. And of course, if you've got the Play Store, you've got access to all the Android stuff in the world all readily available. So this is all very good. So finally here, I'm just going to press and hold the power key, which will bring up a this little menu here, you might think that's not very exciting, but what you can do apparently is to install another system image, which will give you an option here to go to Ubuntu. Yes, you can dual boot this board. So I'm going to try and set it up and I'll talk to you again in a minute. So here I am back again, again booting into Android, but uh, since I saw you last, I've connected my Vim 2 to my laptop, downloaded the dual boot image, and used the instructions on this page to write that image to the Vim 2. And so here we are back in Android, just like we were before, but this time what I'm gonna do is to uh, press the power key, press and hold the power key, like that. And we can now, look, we can now reboot to Ubuntu. So I'm gonna click on that. We might have a brief break in our picture, because of course we'll be a uh, rebooting the system, but we'll see what happens. And uh, we seem to be coming up again okay. Yes, we are definitely seem to be going into a Linux distro. And uh, here we are, yes, on the, on the screen in, uh, in Ubuntu, which uh, just uh, Cardas, I think is the password. It is, username and password there, which is sorting itself out and um, there we are on our Linux desktop. That's pretty good, isn't it? I have been into this once already just to set a few font sizes and things to make this things a little nicer on the screen for you. But basically, this is what you get when the thing first boots up. And if we just have a little look around, you'll see there's, a, again, not a massive amount pre-installed, which is not a bad thing, really, is it? You don't want to have a machine full of bloatware, but uh, the basics are there. And one of the things you might have noticed that we do have a reboot to Android option there. So basically, once you've rebooted to uh, Ubuntu, as we've got here, the board will always boot into Linux uh, until you go back to that option to reboot to Android. And then it'll always boot to Android until you come back the other way, as you see. So it's a very nice dual boot setup. And uh, I'll just run up a web browser because I always do just to prove it works. We've got Chrome here again. And once again, we've got to the Explaining Computers website nice and quickly, as you saw. And I'll also uh, just run up a LibreOffice writer just to prove we've got uh, things like that running and coming up again, as you can see, nice and quickly. This seems to be a very powerful, very slick single board computer. Great Android implementation, and as far as I can see, a great implementation of uh, Ubuntu Mate as well. So I'll just, for those of you who want a few technical bits, and not do lots of tests today, but I will pull up um, HTOP there. Uh, which will come up very, very small. But for those of you who've got great eyesight and who can make up what's on the screen there, that might be useful to you. Anyway, and I think we've seen very clearly the quality of the operating system support available for the Cardass Vim 2. The Cardass Vim 2 is a very nice single board computer that can clearly meet the needs of two different user groups. On the one hand, this board is clearly suitable for people who want to do maker work or development work, things like that. But the board is also targeted at people who simply want to buy a single board computer that comes pre-cased, has got Android pre-installed, and which they can therefore use out of the box as a great Android device. But now that's it for another video. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And I hope to talk to you again very soon.